Hi, this is Kat Sturz from rockingyourpath.com with another episode of Fast Action Fridays. Today, my special guest is Phyllis Nichols, who has a lot of experience uploading, creating, managing podcasts, which is a hot commodity in the online world, has been for a while, and I don't see any end in sight. You can uh, update me on that in a minute, Phyllis. I'm so glad to have you join us here. You know from talking to me that setting up a podcast on one of the bod- broadcast sites like Apple Podcasts, which most of us know is iTunes, right. um, or uh, Google Play, or some of the other ones out there is not a specialty of mine. I have not done that myself. So you've been really instrumental in helping me understand some of the beginner steps that I need to consider So before you get into those special action tips for us, tell everybody a little bit about you and your background. Sure. Well, thank you, Kat. It's lovely to be here. Um, It's really nice to be able to have this conversation with you. Um, And and nice to uh, have you invite me to Fast Action Friday. That's really cool. Um, So where I, I actually, I'll tell you the really super short version. I really consider myself a salesperson at heart more than anything. Um, I did that for a number of years in the corporate world. And like a lot of us, um, you know, there just became a time to change. And so I started working with people in their sales and marketing fields with small businesses primarily. And one thing led to another. And then I, it really became clear that a lot of people, the part of the reason they were struggling with sales is because they didn't have good messaging, which I know is something you know a lot about. Yep. So we started helping people with the messaging as a method to actually increase their sales. And um, then one of the the avenues um, that we, you know, we help them amplify that message, so to speak, is using podcasts. So it's, it's a bit of fun, a journey and um, like lots of things in business, right? There's a little bit of a cycle to some things, but then there's always, again, a little bit something new or um, uh, I think, I knew maybe not even be the right word. I think it's just, we, we just, we, we use it, we use our information and we connect with people differently. And I think that's what keeps kind of changing. Um, the word that comes to my mind is integrated marketing. And as a yeah. certified guerrilla marketing coach, though most people know me as the purgatory relief coach for people who think marketing is hell. <laughs> I love an, that integrated, <laughs> an integrated approach is what we all need. Yeah. And you have to start somewhere. You can't do all of the avenues open to you for uh, sales and marketing and advertising. You can't do them all at once. Right. Right. And not all of them are going to be your best option or your more most um, efficient or time money saving one yeah Yeah. some i I really like people to exhaust a lot of their free options uh, Mm -hmm. before they start jumping into say facebook ads or uh, other avenues that are more costly so what about podcasts what do we need to know if we want to start a podcast do we have to keep inventing new stuff all the time or do we repurpose things we have or give me give me some direction here <laughs> so yeah so the the short answer is um yes right but so a <laughs> couple of a couple of things about podcasting that i think are good to know number one you can apps we absolutely recommend that people um repurpose information and content that they already have uh, especially if you have, I know that you have video, some of your um, clients and some of the people watching might really just have blog posts, or maybe they've done a variety of a couple of things, um, Facebook lives, even that kind of thing. Those really lend themselves really well to podcasts. We have several clients who we, we just take their Facebook live and use the audio and um, we edit it a little bit and that is their podcast. So they're creating some really good content that they know connects well with their market and it's reaching people in different places because I will tell you this, the people who listen to podcasts there's, there's a tiny bit of crossover in the people who would watch a Facebook Live and listen to the podcast, but it's not big. So you're going to reach different people 
in the podcast world than you will in Facebook Live. Not good, bad, better, worse, just different. So it's, it's a great way to expand your audience, which is what most of us are looking to do. We're looking for better ways to do that. Especially if it's to our target audience and if they're choosing to listen to us, that's kind of the definition of a target <laughs> audience for, for us. It is. I would imagine some people could even... Uh, record themselves reading their own blog posts. Yeah, abso absolutely. Um, we have a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of people that have single person podcasts. So I think depending on where you've learned about podcasts and what you were introduced to in the beginning, I think some people, if you've only listened to a handful and they were all interview style podcasts, you might feel like that's what you have to do. And it is not. Um, there are people who do a combination of both. There are uh, some really good podcasters that just come in and, and talk about a very specific topic. There's a couple of, um, so the nice thing about that is that you can do what suits you. Um, if you have a blog post, for example, that's gotten a ton of traffic and comments and that you know has really, really connected with your audience, you absolutely need to just repurpose that in audio form. Because we, you already know that it, it really hit the needle. It really, it really impacted your audience and they really responded to it. You know, you definitely want to put that in audio format. And, and it, whether it's you just talking through it or having a conversation about it or however you want to do it. But yeah, that's, and so I don't want people to feel like they've got to come up with a whole brand new thing or they got to start interviewing people. If that's just not their style, it's definitely not required. Well, Fast Action Fridays is primarily an interview show, but I also have a whole collection of one-off quick tips that I can see as um, either a separate show or yep. can I incorporate those right into the Fast Action Friday theme? I Personally, I would, I would just incorporate it right into your Fast, a fast Action Friday theme. <laughs> you know, what's interesting, so there's – a lot of um, people that have some, some, some of the really highly uh, listened to, some of the podcasts that get a lot of traction and get millions of downloads, um, they have some longer form content, which is normally an interview, and they might be quite lengthy, maybe even an hour. Some of them even go longer than an hour. Um, and, and they also will have, um, they have they, sometimes they call them mini-sodes. Sometimes they are, they just, or they just have shorter versions. Sometimes they'll, and they literally come in and say, you know what, today I'm not doing an interview. I'm going to talk about this because this is what's on my mind or this is what's been coming up mm -hmm. or whatever. Or they're repurposing content maybe from a conference that they were at where they gave a short, a short talk or, you know, something like that. So yeah, absolutely work all that in. I, it's all good information. And if it's the, if as long as you're targeting and the, the audience the, the same audience is going to be interested. I, I don't, yeah, you definitely don't need to split that up. I would definitely put it together. Is you there know, a, use it in the same podcast. Is there a minimum length for something to be considered a podcast where you would go to the trouble of uploading it to a <laughs> podcasting host? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny that you ask that. Um, Cause most people will say like, how long should it be? So there, there are podcasts that are, two and three hours long. Um, that's not typical. That's uh, much more like a serial type thing where people are anyway, but there some of them are really fascinating. There's, so the short answer is no. What's interesting is I think your approach. Now there are a couple of people and this name escapes me. If I think of it, if it pops in when we're talking later, I'll, I'll let you know, but there's a gentleman, he's widely known. He's an SEO expert and he does a literally, I think it's five to seven minute episode. It's just one tiny little tip. Sometimes it's, it's about five minutes, I think, is average. Um, but he does them, I want to say, every day, Monday through Friday. Um, or maybe he does Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Anyway, but so yeah, he just purposely, um, it's prob I'm guessing, I don't know him personally, but I'm guessing it's probably because it's really easy. He's a very busy guy. So it's probably easy for him to sit down. And this is something you're, this is one of the tips that your listeners might want to to jot down is to batch record or to be able to put stuff together. So my guess is this gentleman, right? He can think, you know, he, he has five or six tips maybe that have just come up in conversations with clients during the week. So he can maybe sit down on a Friday afternoon and record those five little short segments. And that's all of next week's content for the podcast. Right. And it just kind of gets uploaded and scheduled. Um, 
so I think in that regard, I think that's smart. That's one of the other nice things about podcasting, right? You can, you can make it your own and do it in a way that works for you. You're used to doing these nice videos and having these really great conversations. You're a really great interviewer. You're good at this. Um, but not all of us are, right? So some people, um, one of our podcasters is a, she's a former teacher and she's just excellent at breaking down concepts in sort of a teaching mode, but also in a very interesting way. And it works great for her and her podcast. Um, so, you know, whatever the people, you know, whatever your style is, I would encourage people to embrace that. Don't, don't try to be like Kat if that's not your strong suit. Um, and it, but if you are a great interviewer, if you're the person that everybody wants to talk to at an event and you're the one that everybody kind of, you know, connects with everybody, you know, then maybe interviewing is going to be, you know, your, your jam, but I don't want people to feel like they have to do that if that's not for them. Oh, that's great advice. I love the first two tips. Okay. Repurpose, repurpose, repurpose. Yes. You know? Yeah. Make use of what you've already got. Right. And then two, batch what you're doing to save time, energy, probably money too. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if this is a side shoot question, but a lot of people are talking about like Alexis briefings and things like that. Is mm -hmm. that considered a podcast? You know, it's great that you bring that up. It's, um, I don't technically, I don't think it's considered a podcast because it's, uh, they're not saved unless somebody, unless the person that produces them moves them to another place, you know, they're kind of just that daily little thing. Ah, okay. okay. So that's a good distinct, distinct, yeah, but that unless you're repurposing your Alexa briefings right. as a podcast elsewhere, right. Right. That someplace that archives it. Right. So it they're going to retreat. Right. Okay. They're going to go away on that format um, with Amazon. It's funny when you said that my little thing lit up over here. So <laughs> Um, that's been funny on some of these. Yes. Yeah, but that's not, that's not a bad way to go. If that's something it, you're already doing that, obviously you would be, and I think most people who probably, if they're doing a briefing, you know, are, are probably already using that content or the briefings content that they've taken from somewhere else. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's it's, but audio content that just shows the power. I think of the audio content. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, can I want to speak to that just really quickly? Yes, please do. This is not a how-to tip, but it's something I think it's good to know. One of the reasons I think that podcasts are so effective, um, you, I want people to know that you do not, it's, it's, it's awesome if you can, we can get to millions of downloads, but you can move the needle and you can really make an impact and reach your audience with much more modest numbers um, in part because you can really target the conversation that you're having with your audience. And also because we know people who listen to podcasts, um, there's been tons and tons of studies on this, and it's pretty consistent. People who listen to podcasts listen to 80%, 80 to 100% of the entire episode. Whoa. Yeah. So, so if, you, if you've got people and, and you know, they're, they're listening to your podcast, they're, they're there with you, um, and <laughs> which I think is fantastic. I, you know, I... I've, I've done a lot of writing. I know you do a lot of writing and I enjoy writing and it's still much easier for also, this is another tip really for me to verbally communicate with somebody, right? I think I, at least for me, I tell you, writing something that's really good and interesting and helpful. And that's like somebody's going to read a 1500 word article. Like that's, that's not an easy thing for most of us. No. And Truth be told, a lot of my early drafts are just me talking to myself on paper. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? Where we're writing the way that we think and the way that we're talking through concepts and ideas. But the other thing is, even if, you know, even if you're the most gifted writer, um, it's still, I think, harder to get an audience of people who are, are going to read through, you know, some of maybe even the most brilliant um, information. Um, I'm not really... I'm. I love to read, so I read tons of stuff, but I know that, you know, just, there just are some people, I don't care how brilliant the information is or how helpful it is, they may not read it. They're just not choosing to consume information in that format. Um, I know, you know, obviously, a lot of people would prefer something in video, and so there's a, a, a reason to do that. If, here's another tip for people. If, you know, a lot of 
you're good at video. Lots of people are doing Facebook lives these days, but there are a group of us and I'm one of them. Um, I, I don't do a lot of video for, I just, it's just not my jam for some reason. But you know, here's the nice thing. I can take an audio file and I can then put it on YouTube with a little still graphic or what have you. And we're finding out that there are many, many people who listen to videos, mm -hmm. right? So they're not always watching. And so if, um, if people know out there that they, uh, their audience are people that are video people or they're YouTube people, they're looking for answers on YouTube, like how to answers and things like that. You know, you don't, have to necessarily have a, a video type thing. You could repurpose some of your audio content there and mm -hmm. people will find you that way. So it's, um, I, I just, I want people to know, you know, that audio can live in, in, in help and, and really reach people in a couple of different, um, avenues. Right. I love having the option of either watching or listening to something. Cause I don't always have time or inclination to sit and watch right. a video. I don't either. And there are times I want to read because I can read very fast, mm -hmm. but there are times I can listen and multi-purpose <laughs> my own actions by doing something else and still with an ear to what I'm absorbing right. um, through the audio. So I like that. Yeah. And with the podcast, it's relatively easy, isn't it, to even repurpose just the audio onto a blog post? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, it is. So now this gets into a couple of, of tech things. I think part of the reason I think some people don't obviously are reluctant maybe to podcast is because of some of the technology. And fortunately, and I will say even in just, I started my podcast a little over three years ago and it's even night and day um, from then, right? It's so much easier now. So you don't have to have um, any expensive equipment. You don't have to have um, a lot of technical know-how. You know, we're recording today on Zoom, which is a format that I think a lot of people are very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. There are free um, other things if people don't want to have Zoom. Um, Audacity, there's an, a, a recorder called Audacity that people can use. It's free. You do have to download it. It's not web-based, but it's completely but it's free. free. No, I, use the, I use that, Lou. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so your just, phone, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can use your phone. So I and I want to talk to, to that too. There, there's the other part of podcasting that is important, which is, you know, the mo the most people consume, honestly, most people, 90% of people, probably more listen to podcasts on their phone. And mm -hmm. some people have said, because podcasts have been around for a while. Like they've been around since the mid to like 2006, 2007. And people are like, why, you know, why are they so popular and still growing in popularity? And this is why, mm -hmm. because we have this with us everywhere and it makes it so easy for you to write if you're a commuter. Um, if you take, if you're walking, if you're in the bus line, picking up your kids, if you're whatever, right? There's just these pockets of time where we can take advantage of listening. Most people are going to listen on an app. So whether it's an iTunes app, if you're an iPhones person, or it might be Stitcher or Spotify um, there's another app called TuneIn that plays nice with the Amazon Alexa device. So people are going to be, that's the, that's the one thing that we just, we, I want your listeners to know, your, the people watching today, there's a couple of things you need to do to get your podcast on those formats. It's, it's kind of a do it, do it one time kind of thing. And then, um, have a host your podcast kind of has to live somewhere it's an mp3 file and if you don't even have to technically know what that is it's just you know so like we would want to just put have our mp3s up on like our amazon s3 account they really should have a be on a dedicated podcast host yes Right. And I, and I'll tell you why. So you can put good audio content on S3, but a couple things happen there. First of all, if you get, if you're fairly popular, which doesn't take long to happen, um, mm -hmm. that's going to get a little pricey. Number mm -hmm. one, number two is, um, if multiple people, so it's not uncommon when our podcasters, um, let's say they publish every Wednesday. Um, it's not uncommon for a hundred people to download, maybe even more. Some, and one of, some of our podcasters get four or 5,000 downloads the day that wow. those goes live. So, you know, even the S3 is not going to be able to serve it up a hundred times to a hundred people at once. 
-hmm. So we recommend a host called Libsyn. There are others. Um, I know SoundCloud is another, um, but, but that's where your podcast can live and, and that can serve it up. So if, if a hundred people go at the exact same moment and hit the iTunes app or the Stitcher app and go, I want to listen to Kat's podcast, um, it's a, it'll play. And that's, you know, and again, there's just a lot, there's a couple of set it up once kind of things that you do there. And then you're on those platforms and people can access you to, the way that they want to access your information. Right, right. Now, I know you've told me that your preference is Lisbon, and I'm going to have you explain why in just a second. But if somebody's brand new and doesn't know if they want to do this and just wants to dip their toe in it, is there a free service to, that they can start with? Uh, or there, what's there your is. recommendation for them? There is, there's a couple things. So one of the reasons I like Lipson is because they're, this is, they're just really good at this. They're, and they have lots of help uh, videos. They have lots of support. Um, they actually have real people that'll talk to you if you need that. Um, so, I, and I like that. And it starts as low as $5. It is a monthly service subscription. It starts as low as $5. It goes up to $75 and it's based on how much you upload. Right. So if I upload, let's say, you know, two episodes a month, that might only be 10 or $15 in hosting for me to pay, even if 10 or 15 or 100,000 people download it, doesn't matter. Oh, that's good to um, know. Yeah. So that's that. Now there is a, there are a couple free, um, the, probably the biggest, most popular free version is called Anchor. I believe it's Anchor FM. And I know of them a little. I am not an expert with Anchor by any means, but it is 100% free. And in fact, they recommend that you just record with your phone. It's, their, their app is really meant for you to record and publish your podcast on the phone. They will put you on iTunes. Um, it's a great way to check out what you want. Um, the, the, and I don't know if this is a... Uh, the difference I would say is couple, two things that you need to know about that. Number one, you're not going to really be able to sort of personally brand it a whole lot because you're on their platform. Number two is um, they have, there's been some back and forth on this, um, but technically they really own your content. You really, you don't own it um, because you're on their free platform. Yeah, but there's a give it, and take for free. <laughs> it, there is. But if for somebody, if somebody just wants to kind of play around with it, they want to see if they like it or they want to. I love, I love and recommend people use Anchor, especially if you have maybe like a teenager or you have something, maybe it's something that's just event specific. Like once a year you have a big maybe fundraiser or something and you want to just do some podcasting around something really specific and short term. I think it's a great solution. Oh, that's great. All right, a couple things we want to get in before we close up, because I think you and I could talk about three hours on this. <laughs> <laughs> One, um, I want everybody to know that you have a free guide that mm -hmm. we will be um, offering people. Uh, they can opt in to get that. And it's, is it on your soundadvicesales.com site? It is. It's at soundadvicesales.com. Um, I believe there's a spot on the homepage or you can go to soundadvicesales.com slash start your podcast, like one big long word. Okay. And um, you can get it there. I'll, it is, it's like 20 some pages long. We keep adding to it and it walks you through everything from thinking about a name, thinking about a concept, thinking about like some of these ideas that you might already have in your head to some real practical how to's, how how to record, how to use Zoom to record, how to use some other, there's other options to record, um, all the way to all kinds of stuff. So we try to make it really as complete as we can so that, and so they understand what your options are and make it easy. Yeah, exactly what I needed. And I know my list listeners who are interested in starting a podcast or even considering that that's really good information to give them a good foundational understanding of what to do, what to expect. So my closing question for you, and the one that I struggle with sometimes, is how important is being consistent once you start one? Oh, that's such a good question, Kat. Um, so the short, it's very, it's pretty important. Um, and I will say too, um, in all self-honesty and disclosure, I have. Uh, 
I was very consistent. I did take a break and a pause in my podcast production for a while because I wasn't able to keep it up with a, the publishing pace. <laughs> so, um, and then I've started back up. So, but consistency, just like in blogging or doing Facebook lives or what have you, consistency is going to help so much because honestly, it's pretty easy to grow an audience in podcasting. It's pretty easy to start getting a good following. And, um, but but the thing that will stop that and, and it is when, you know, the, the Tuesday show doesn't show up or, you know, whatever. Right now, there are lots of podcasters who um, intentionally take maybe like the month of July off, you know, and they just, they sort of, their listeners are prepared for that. Some, mm -hmm. some of them will even like, re, they'll just sort of rerun past episodes um, just so that something comes out. Um, that's not a bad idea, but consistency helps. So if you can't publish weekly, I mean, there's some people who publish daily, like uh, that's their full-time job. That um, isn't happening in this house. Yeah, it's, it's not happening here either. <laughs> I, I would love to, but that's not, you know, for those people, that's it. That is their job. Um, weekly is nice. If you, if you feel like weekly might be a little hard in the beginning, start with every other week. Um, you know, start with something that feels really comfortable and doable. One other tip I will tell people get, you know, if you're considering podcasting, even before you worry about the name and some of these other things, just hit record and start recording. Start getting used to talking through concepts and ideas. Um, mm -hmm. You'll quickly get into a nice groove, and then that'll help when you're like batching ideas and thinking of things you want to do. And I think I think that helps a lot. And then it, and then it becomes I think then you'll know, okay, I could do four of these in an afternoon or, oh my gosh, no, there's no way. Like I can only do one every couple of weeks, you know, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Whatever's right for you is right for you. I love the information you gave us. You really, I feel like I have a solid grounding to make some wise decisions about what I want to do with podcasting. Uh, those who have been following Fast Action Fridays for a while know that I do make a uh, the episodes available as audio only. Um, but I'm looking to repurpose, which was that first tip, repurpose what you've got. Yeah. I hope you do, because I think I think you're gonna find a ton of people who are gonna find you for the for, you're gonna they're gonna be like, where have you been with all of this good information? And you're gonna be like over here. <laughs> I love that. So if I've got this right, your action tips that we can kind of just jump in and start. Um, my first tip is go get Phyllis's free guide. I yep. mean, start there. Sure. Repurpose things you've already got on hand Absolutely. rather than reinvent the wheel. Um, batch record to save yourself time and energy and eventually money mm -hmm. uh, with the editing process and the um, uploading process and the distribution prop process. Consider YouTube as a place for audio only with just an overlay of, a, of an image that represents what you're talking about, which mm -hmm. is a great idea. And I've got down here, use a podcast host rather than your typical sharing platforms because of the download of requirements and technical aspects there. And again, you're going to be saving your money because we talked about Amazon S3, you're charged there by the amount of downloads rather than the amount of uploads there. And then right. five, right. aim for consistency, whatever's consistent for you that you can kind of train your listeners to expect. Did I get them? All Perfect. right. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, we're going to have to have you back, I'm sure, when we get how we can... Uh, maybe manage our podcasts better or promote our podcasts better. I think those would be great follow-up interviews with you right now. Thank you so much, Phyllis, for joining us today. And Oh, thank you for having me. I'm, it's my pleasure. This has been, you've made this so easy for me. Um, I really appreciate it. Oh, I love hearing that because I love being someone's first interview opportunity, even though I know this isn't your first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't do many, especially on video. So um, I, I appreciate you making me so comfortable. Oh, that's great to hear. And I am Kat Sturts from rockingyourpath.com, thanking you for joining us for another episode of Fast Action Fridays and reminding you to always keep rocking your unique path to success. Come visit us next time when we'll have another great guest. Bye. <laughs>